hey what's happening guys hope you all are doing well this is Tito back with another video and today in this video i am going to show you how to install unleash os based on android 8.1 on redmi note 3 so without further any more delay let's make it happen first you need to go to this xda thread to download the rom i will be flashing the 6th march 2018 build today as it's the latest one as of now and for the gapps head on over to the official open gapps website from the description box below and select the arm64 8.1 micro so as i have downloaded the rom and gapps file in my storage and i am using latest nitrogen os 8.1 so now let me boot the phone into twrp recovery and before proceeding make sure you have backed up everything from your device you have officially unlocked bootloader and you have official twrp recovery installed and make sure you are doing everything on your own risk. So now, as you can see, it's booted up in the latest Redbird recovery, which is 3.2.1/0. So now we have to do regular stuff as usual, which are wiping cache, Dalvik cache system, and data. Once that's done, hit install, select the ROM and GApps file in your storage, and swipe to confirm flash. As you can see, while installation, it shows Unleash over here. So once the flashing is done, hit Reboot System. Here is the boot animation of this ROM which has kind of a glitch effect in it. As we are booted up into the system, let me complete the setup process. Here we have pixel launcher as default launcher already and if I lock the screen as you can see the ambient display turns on. I think it's kind of a always on display thing but as we do not have OLED display it will definitely drain our batteries and I am pretty sure it's the modded pixel launcher here as default launcher. So I definitely like it as I don't have to change my launcher later and it restored my home screen setup already so that's cool. Here are the stock apps this ROM comes preloaded with, except UC Browser and PixArt. We have Magisk Manager pre-installed here. AdAway is kind of an ad blocker I guess. So I don't recommend using it as it harms us the smaller YouTubers. And we have Audio FX here and Chromium and other stuff like Music Player. Now let me open up Magisk Manager and see if SafetyNet works fine or not. And yes, it works fine as you can see. So all the banking apps should work fine on this ROM. So now let me jump into the about section of this ROM. Here on the top we have Unleash logo as you can see. The stock kernel over here is Reaper kernel. So I am not sure about how the battery life will be as I haven't ever tried this kernel. So I will be posting the battery life later on Twitter and Facebook as I test it. So do follow me there from the description. Now let's go back to main settings page. Here we have root management settings which simply opens up Magisk manager. Now let me jump into the display settings. Here as you can see we have live display and yeah it works fine. And here we have full fledged color calibration option if you are into that. And if you scroll down in ambient display, we have option for always on display and lot of stuff like that. Have a look if you are into it. I have disabled it because I don't need always on display. Now let's go back in main settings page. Here in unleash settings, all the customizations are. We have status bar, panels, quick settings and other options here. In clock and date settings, you can change the clock position to right, left or center in the status bar. As you can see, I selected center clock over here. Adjust the AM PM size to normal or small and even show date in status bar. Next we have network traffic. After that we have notification ticker. Here we have battery customizations. You can change it to circle, dotted circle, etc. I have changed it to big dotted circle over here. You can enable battery bar if you want that and even customize it further. Next we have status bar weather if you want that. Let's skip the logo stuff. Now we have system icon options. 
From here, you can enable VoLTE icon, 4G icon instead of LTE, and other stuff like Bluetooth battery icon, etc. Next, we have status bar gestures. Here, we have brightness control by sliding finger on the status bar and double tap to sleep. Both works fine for me. After that, we have carrier label and tuner. From here, you can enable status bar icons like headset, hotspot, etc. Next, we have panels. From here, you can enable custom header images like this. But I don't like it, so I'm gonna turn it off. Next, we have volume panel customizations. After that, we have power menu opacity customization. Now, we have notification. After that, for quick toggles, you can enable quick pull down and smart pull down. And you can customize each tile column row numbers. You have auto brightness icon and scroll quick setting toggles option, which works great as you can see. Next, we have advanced settings. From here, you can enable easy tile adding option and stuff like vibrate on touch quick toggles. After that, from recent, you can enable clear all button and you can customize it even further. As you can see, it's set to rotation and when you hit the recent button, the clear all button rotates. Next, we have general UI settings. From here, you can enable memory bar or RAM stats on recent apps panel if you want that and slim recents is here if you want that. In interface, you have fingerprint settings. Next, we have blur options. After that, we have display size. Let me reduce it to small. Next, we have heads up. Let me disable it. There are dashboard and sound customizations if you want that. In UI styler, we have the UI and accent color changing option. As you can see, the whole UI color turned dark and we have these many accent color options. Now let me change it as it was because I like it that way. After that, we have the same ambient display settings as it was in display. So moving on. Next we have expanded desktop if you want that. After that we have in-call customization options. So let me enable vibrate on connect. After that we have screenshot type. From here you can set it to partial or full. Next, in MISC settings, we have three finger screenshot gesture, which works fine as you can see. After that, we have the lock screen customizations. Here in security, we have double tap to sleep, quick unlock, and auto face unlock option is here. And in lock UI, we have option to enable battery info while charging like nitrogen OS. And we have lock screen weather if you want that. Next, we have buttons. From here, you can customize hardware buttons. Let me set up the home screen long press action to Google Assistant. And you can totally disable hardware buttons if you want to use on screen buttons only. From power menu customizations, you can enable advanced reboot if you want that. Next, from navigation, of course, you can enable on screen buttons as you can see. Next, we have animations. Well, gotta say, most of the things in customizations here are very similar to Resurrection Remix. And we have even CRT lock screen animation and the UI animation by default, I guess, is set to 0.5 seconds. That's why the whole UI feels snappy enough. In gestures, of course, we have gesture anywhere control, app circle bar and pie control if you want that. In miscellaneous, we have suspend actions, weather, system app remover. The system app remover for me didn't work properly as the add away and chromium was still there even after I tried removing it. So that's that. Here is a demo of Geo 4G Vaulty calling works fine on this ROM. Here is a demo of quick face unlock. Yes, it works super fine.
I like this Vaulty logo and stuff. And here as you can see quick pull down from anywhere in the home screen works fine. Double tap to sleep works fine and even the sliding finger for adjusting the brightness feature works fine but sadly I forgot to shoot the b-roll of it. The whole UI feels snappy enough as you can see and everything felt so smooth but I did notice some frame drops it might be because the UI animation is set to 0.5 seconds I guess and things like Vault E, Wi-Fi, Data, Hotspot, Notification LED, Torch, FPC fingerprint scanner, Google Assistant, Instant Face Unlock work super fine in this ROM. And now let me test out the RAM management of this ROM by opening up a few apps. In the meantime, let me show you the Antutu and Geekbench scores of this ROM. And here is a portrait selfie of my ugly face that I shot with GC Mod 5. So that's working super fine on this ROM. And as you can tell, all the apps were in memory, so RAM management is pretty good so far. And for the battery life, you have to stay tuned on my Twitter or Facebook handles. I'll post it later today as I test it out. And this ROM in my opinion has quite the taste of both worlds of Resurrection Remix and Nitrogen OS, I gotta say. So it's up to you if you wanna try it or not. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching guys. Hit the big thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel right here if you love my work. This has been Dero. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye now.